Here we are in Tuscumbia, Alabama, and we're on our way to see the home of Helen Keller. Now Helen's grandfather, who was David Keller, built his home here back in 18 and 20. Now David uh, owned a 640 acre plantation. Now this was 40 years before the Civil War. And he not only built this home, this is David here, but he also uh, built the little house that became so famous later on by Helen. Uh, and, but his purpose was, it was he served as an office for him. And what he would do is he kept all of his plantation records uh, in the little house. And uh, th they did that in those days because of fire. Now, David never did see his granddaughter, Helen, because he died early. He died in 18 and 32. And, uh, however, his, uh, his wife, Mary Moore Keller, uh, she lived until around 1904. And so Helen, at that time, was, uh, was in her early teens. So she did, she did know Helen. Now, Helen's father was named Arthur H. Keller. Now, Arthur first married Sarah Rosser from Memphis, Tennessee. But unfortunately, uh, Sarah died in 1877 at the young age of 38. But before she passed on, they had two sons, James and Simpson. One year later, um, against the oldest child's will, I might say, uh, he went and married Kate Adams. And she was also a Memphis Belle, and she was from a prominent family, and her father actually was a Brigadier General in the Confederate Army during the war. Now, Kate was only 22 years old when she married Arthur, and he was 42, so he was 20 years her senior. Now, Kate died in 1921 when uh, Helen was 41 years old. So when he brought her back here to Ivy Green, uh, he took the little cabin and he transformed it into a honeymoon cabin for them. Now, Kate loved that idea because it was private and it was away sort of from, although it was only 40 uh, feet from the main house, it was away from everybody. And uh, she loved the privacy more than anything else. Now, after about a year and a half or so of living there, little Helen was born in 1880. Now, Helen was a normal child, a bright child, but after 19 months, uh, a fever struck her. And uh, in those days, the doctors didn't really know how to treat it. They didn't have anything to treat it was with, so they just suggested that uh, they use water to keep her as cool as they could. Now, doctors today would say it might be a form of meningitis that she had, but more than likely, most doctors say it was scarlet fever. Now, after the fever broke, they then realized that little Helen couldn't see and she couldn't hear. And so at that time, the uh, Kellers moved back into the main house. Now, uh, after, of course, after the teacher, Annie Sullivan, come, uh, Helen Helen often said that this tree here, which is over 200 years old, I might add, uh, was, is her favorite spot at Ivy Green. And that's because uh, uh, Annie, her teacher, would bring her out here. They would have picnics under this tree. And, and she would actually let Helen sit on the branches and limbs, which was a lot lower, of course, then. And uh, Helen said that that was, uh, that was a bright spot in her memory. Now, about after Helen was born, five years later, uh, her sister Mildred was born. And then, of course, after that, her brother Philip was born. Now, we've just stepped into the front door of the uh, home. And this, this home is made up of four rooms downstairs and two rooms upstairs. Now, the room on the right that you just seen there, that, that's where uh, uh, Kate and Arthur moved 
into and upstairs here on the right is where the boys room and then on the left was Helen and Annie's room now we're in the we're in the uh, uh, her mother and daddy's room see the clothes over there some of those clothes belong to her mother Kate and some actually belong to Helen that picture up there on the mantel I, that's that's uh, that's Helen Look at the bed spread on this bed. And they say that uh, 85% of all the uh, furnishings in this house actually belong to the Kellers. It's actually their furniture that they used. Now this picture here on the dresser, that's a picture of Helen's younger brother, Philip. Now this picture right here over the mantle, that, that is a picture of Helen when she was 15 years old. Now later on, uh, people have made suggestions about Helen's uh, pretty eyes, but they didn't know. They really kept this a secret. Uh, they actually took Helen's eyes, original eyes out and, uh, and put uh, more eyes in so that she would uh, she she so she would be prettier now this is the parlor now captain they call him captain keller her daddy simply because he was and this is him here because he was a captain in the confederate army during the war and he also was an attorney and he um, run the plantation here and he also uh uh, had bought a struggling newspaper. Now this is this is uh, Helen's mother, Kate, and of course this is Annie. This is her teacher. Now uh, Captain Keller uh, was was sort of struggling, but later on, after uh, uh, the finances improved a little after uh, uh, Helen was born, because. President of the United States appointed him United States Marshal, and that helped their finances a great deal. Now, this this here is Helen and Annie and uh, Polly Thompson. And uh, Annie was uh, Helen's uh, companion for 49 years, and then Polly Thompson was, uh, they, they hired her as a secretary in 19 and 14, and of course, uh, after, after, Annie died in uh, 19 and 60, uh, 38, excuse me, okay, then uh, Polly took over. Now, that was Helen in, in her 40s. She looked like she was in the 20s. Now, this is the famous dining room here. This is where uh, Helen threw all of her fits, and she would eat out of everybody's place, and she was just like a little wild animal. Well, uh, when the... Uh, the uh, Perkins School sent uh, sent Annie here to teach Helen. She she was uh, she was only 20 years old, and Helen was uh, almost seven. Well, this was uh, this was her first teaching assignment, and uh, uh, Captain Keller paid her 25 dollars a month plus room and board, which is a which is a huge salary at that time. First thing that Annie had to do was to get Helen under control. Uh, how to fold her napkins and how to sit at the table without grabbing for everybody's plates. So she'd have to slap her hands every once in a while. And, of course, this just broke Captain Keller's heart. And he said, well, if you're going to continue to, to correct her like that, you're going to have to do it in the little house away from me. Now, this is Helen at an uh, uh, older age of when she was uh, in her late 80s. All right, now this right here is Helen, uh, Annie, and Annie's husband, uh, John Macy. Now, John Macy was a socialist from the word go, and he was also a teacher at Harvard. And here they are again. 
And some of his socialistic ideas, I think, rubbed off on Helen uh, later on. But anyway, they helped Helen write her first book. And they moved in with Helen. And, and uh, John Macy died in 1932, and that was four years before Annie died. This room actually belonged to, uh, uh, to Evelyn, who was uh, uh, Helen's aunt or her daddy's sister. Now we're upstairs. This is Helen and Annie's room. That uh, was Annie's bed there. And, uh, and uh, the little bed, of course, was, was Helen's. And Helen learned what a key was, and she learned she could lock people. You can lock people up with a key. So she locked her teacher in this room and hid the key. And Captain Keller actually had to uh, get a ladder, climb up to the second floor through that window right there. And Annie had to climb down that ladder to get out of this room. And you know, uh, she didn't. She didn't let them know where that key was for a month later. Now they think she may have hid it here in the trunk room, but they never did find it. She just come up with it one day. And across the hall over here is the room that the uh, that the boys all uh, lived in. And Now we'll go back uh, back down the stairs. Now I'm standing at the back door of the house, and you can see how close everything is. That's the well right there, the famous well, and that's the uh, little house right over there. Now, through the well there, you can see the ice house over there, and this right here was the kitchen. Now, uh, Annie's best friend and playmate was Martha Washington. No, not that Martha Washington. Uh, the cook's young daughter, Martha Washington. And here is the, uh, here's where all the meals were cooked, and of course they would tote them into the dining room, into the big house. And uh, um, Annie and Martha actually sort of learned, learned to uh, communicate by signs and different things that they would, uh, they just sort of come up with it on their own. Now, this is the bedroom for the cook. Now, uh, Captain Keller, they, they first tried Annie in the little house to, I mean, uh, Helen, so that Annie could sort of get control over it. Well, it didn't work because it was too close to the house, and she knew it. So what they did was they rode her around for two hours in a buggy and then brought her back to the little house, and she didn't know it. She thought she was a long way off, and, of course, it was just her and Annie. And so Annie was able to get control of her. So it was two weeks before Helen realized she was back in the little house. Now, this is the famous water pump. Now, what they did was, Helen had tried, I mean, she, she just could not catch on to, uh, to being able to understand what, what uh, Annie was doing when she was writing these words in her, in her hand. But what happened here, the bright spot was, is that she, she placed Helen's hand under this water pump. And this is the way it looked then. All right. And then she wrote the word water in the other hand. And what she would do is, she, when she would pump the water slow, she wrote the word water slow. When she pumped the water fast over her hand, she wrote the water fast in her hand. Finally, Helen understood that what she was, what she was writing in one hand was what she was feeling in the other. And she said that that, that that word water opened the door to her soul. She runs around the rest of the day feeling of this and wanting to know what this was. They said she learned 30 new items and words that day. And she actually she wanted to know who uh, Annie Sullivan was. And Annie writes in her hand, Teacher. From then on out, Helen referred to Annie as teacher. She knew what her name was, of course, but she was always teacher. 
And right here is where that miracle took place. Now see how close the little house is? Now this is the way it looked then. Now Helen Keller only had one love in her life, and that was a man by the name of Peter Fagan. Now I don't know much about Peter Fagan, but at that time Annie had gotten sick and she was bedridden, and at the same time Polly Thompson was on vacation in Scotland. So they had employed Fagan as a personal secretary. Their romance went so far that he actually went and applied for a marriage license and they had planned to elope. Unfortunately, they got wind of it and they rushed her off to her sister's in Montgomery. Now, he attempted several times to see her without success. And Helen always referred to this love as the little ray of joy in a sea of darkness in her life. I think it's kind of pitiful. Now this is uh, this is in the little house. It's the back room in the little house. It's only made up of two rooms. Now, see the little bed and whatever? They, those were toys, actually, that Annie played with. Now, I might add that John, uh, John Macy, uh, he stuck around for a few years, and then he went to Europe. And, uh, but, but they never, uh, him and uh, Annie never did divorce. Uh, although the, the, I think they were kind of strange to one another in later life. All right, this is the little house. Now, keep in mind, this is where Kate and Arthur first moved into, and this is where the struggle between Annie and uh, Helen took place until, uh, until Annie uh, was able to get Helen under control. Now, Helen Keller was the first person with her handicaps to graduate from a college. She graduated from Ratcliffe. And she was an author, a lecturer, a humanitarian. And at one time, she was even considered uh, the brightest, the most intelligent woman with her disabilities in the entire world. See the... Uh, uh, the ivy uh, on the trees, that's the reason David Keller named this Ivy Green. Now, the last visit that Helen Keller made to Ivy Green was in 1954. And she was accompanied by her companion, Polly Thompson. <laughs> 